In our three-part series on user-defined values, we've learned to read fields with system information and make queries we can use in UDVs with real-time data. Now it's time to do the final testing and setup of the UDVs. I mentioned in the last video, you cannot test the UDV SQL query in the query generator. Let's try it here. Again, I'm going to just do the max lead time one and I hit OK. And I get an error saying incorrect syntax near 600. It's failing since we do not have values to fill in the dynamic syntax. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm actually going to close this. You're going to want this closed for everything we're doing and get rid of the query manager. Now you can test them if you have an open document. So let's go over here to sales, sales order, and I'm going to just get the last sales order here. I'm going to drop on down here to remarks and just stick my cursor in remarks. So that's an active field. And now I'm going to go over here to tools, go into queries, and you'll see where it says user queries. That's another way of getting the same things we get from the query manager. So we go to user queries and we go to formatted search. And I can now go to one of these that we want. And let's use the remark append for sales order, for example. And you see here that it's run that query and says that the total change is $360. So it ran the query properly and we can see that it actually does work. Okay, I'm going to close this up again. So that query is working. And I can use the other query, by the way, since we do have it here. We can go to, again, queries user queries, formatted search, and I did this doc entry for sales order, and I can run that one, and I get the 1184 for doc number 1184. And you can see the end here says that it installed that for me. Okay, so go ahead and close that up, and now we can go to the next stage. I want to make this change anytime we change the price. I could always, of course, just go to that query and run it when I'm on a sales order and get the information I need. I can leave the query in the menu and do manual updates when necessary. However, I want to make this change much more easier for my users. For that, I'm going to add it to the user-defined value. There are two ways to get to the user-defined value. Now, we have our selected field here, which is remarks, and I'm going to hit Shift F2 here, and I get a message. A user-defined value has not been assigned to this field. Would you like to assign one? And I'm going to go ahead and say yes and I get the user defined value set up. I'm gonna hit the third option here, search in existing user defined values according to the saved query. Okay, so I'll click on that. I get a box here asking for what query I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And I go back in the query manager here and we're gonna be using the remark append for sales order here. So I can just go ahead and hit that. And now we have this in place. I can now go ahead to the next stage. You'll see here there's one more box here, auto refresh when field changes. We're going to look at that a little later, but for right now, I'm going to leave that alone and leave that unchecked. I'm going to go ahead and hit update. And now what I have here is a little spyglass. So if I hit the magnifying glass, it runs the query. And there it is, it's changed the query. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Now, if you do run into the situation where you don't see this, go ahead and close the form and then reload it and you probably will see it then, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. I don't need this one. Do I save the changes? No. Let's go look at another case here. And we're gonna go down over here to inventory and we'll go to the inventory item master data. And you'll see here, I already created another user defined field called max lead time. And I'm gonna be using this one for this operation. And in max lead time, I'm going to be grabbing information from the production orders to figure out what my maximum lead time is. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Let me first test it. And I'm gonna need a value to test it. So let's go in here and I'm gonna to go to LM4029. And then once we have the printer, I can now go ahead and take a look at some of the values here. So I'm gonna go back over here to max lead time, click in the field so it has somewhere to put it, and then go to tools, queries, user queries, again, go to formatted search, or UDV, depending on what you're calling it. And then there's max lead time, and I'll go ahead and run that. Okay, and if you look at the value, you'll see it's wrong. 
Um, and then we can start doing some debugging here. And so if you look up at the top code, you'll see where it says N. That's where we replaced a value, and it replaced the value with item number. Well, that's not right. Actually, we probably have an error in our query. So I'm going to cancel this, and I'm going to go back to our query manager. And let's go to max lead time. Hit OK. And of course, it tells us we got an incorrect syntax. And let's look at the syntax here. It's a 600. And if I, I have system information on, so let's take a look at this. And 600 actually happens to be item number. As we saw, that's, the t that's actually the label. It's not the field. Our field is actually item 5. So this is our problem is right here. So do be careful about that and watch and debug like that. So I'm going to need to edit here. And then I can change this to 5. Save this. Close it all up. Make sure you close your query managers when you're doing any of these type of operations. It'll work a lot better. And then once you do that, let's go back here to Tools, Queries, User Queries, Formatted Search, and Max Lead Time. And this time we get our number 953. It's now working correctly. And you can see over here in item code, it says LM4029. So it's now working properly. Okay, so I'm going to cancel this. We're ready to now load this and put this into place. Now, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm actually going to use the menu this time. If you go to Tools and go down here to Customization Tools, it's the first one here, User Defined Value Setup. It's also Shift-Alt-F2 if you want to use a keyboard. But I tend to use this. It's also where you will go once you set one up and want to modify what you did. So this is an important one to know where it is. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to go search in existing user-defined values according to save query. I'll open the save query and pick my max lead time and hit OK. This time, we're going to start with the auto refresh. So I'll turn that on. And we get two more fields you need to be careful about here. The first one is called field. This is going to be the field that will trigger the change and do the refresh. For our purposes, we want the max lead time to change when the item number changes. So when we have a different item here. So I'm going to click down this drop down, and I can just type an I to get down to the I's. And I can go down here and find item number. And then a really, really important one is you want to make sure you hit refresh regularly. Many times you'll set up everything up and it just will not work, and that's because you haven't hit the refresh regularly. Uh, we're not going to be using this one on the bottom here. You want to use this one to make sure that it actually refreshes. Okay, hit update, and nothing really changes yet. So I'm going to go ahead and close everything up again. Go back into item master data, and once again type in here LM4029. And now if you look over here in the max lead time, we've got 953. If I go over one record, though, it disappears. Okay, A lot of these will disappear. And I can go through a whole bunch of different things and you won't see it. If I get to the printer power supply, you'll notice that I actually do have a max lead time here. What's the difference? Okay, what's going on here is if you looked at the query, it's running off of the production orders. So this will only happen with things that have a bomb, that have a production order, and that you've created enough production orders to actually calculate this. If it doesn't have those things available, or as we set up the query, you have production orders that are open, it's going to ignore all that. It'll say, hey, I don't have anything here. It's null. And for a null value, it doesn't do anything but leave it blank, like I do have here. Now, user-defined values are a powerful customization feature of SAP Business One. You'll notice some already set up for you with those magnifying glasses on the fields. While some of my examples here are for simplicity and are not very practical, there are a lot of practical uses for these. Now, this video is part of three videos of this series. I don't post videos every newsletter, but I occasionally post videos. So you might want to subscribe to this YouTube channel at the rainbow pizza that you'll see on your screen 
to get this and a lot more technical training from me.